YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. Look what we've got here, a completely ready to fly duet. This is being re-released. It's got a new flight controller. It's really basic and simple. Flies on 1S batteries, and it's definitely sub 250, which means no regulations, unless of course you're uh, you know, filming your real estate industry empire with it. So here we go, guys. If you're looking for something fun for a Christmas gift, here it comes. Into the throttle. Differential thrust acts as your rudder, so it becomes basically like a little three channel. The difference between this and your three channel of yesteryear is that it's so easy to fly. We have very light winds this morning. So as you can see, it's just holding its altitude. Just a little teeny bit of up elevator. And look at that thing. It's like you threw a paper airplane and it just kept flying forever. So this is what sensor-aided flight envelope will do for you. And that's, or sister, sensor assisted flight envelope. And you can have this fun little package called the Duet. It comes with removable landing gear. It's very easy to fly. And then when you get to where you're feeling very confident in your abilities, let's do a landing with the auto leveling or safe on. Okay, there you go. Nice and simple, basic maneuvering. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is you can also look here and you can see as the light condition changes, that's gonna tell you how much battery you have left on there. Those one ass batteries don't last long though, so we'll link to another bigger battery that you can also get. But when it's ready to fly, it comes with everything you need. And that includes the batteries inside the transmitter, which is really nice. So if you're getting this as a gift, you're not gonna have to scramble to get a bunch of weird things. Now, the only thing you do have to provide with this particular package is a USB-A plug for your charger to plug into. Now, that may be on your laptop or some other charger that you have in your house. I would imagine you have it. So we're gonna take back off. Now, <clears throat> listen, you see how that just changed? See how that changed? Pressing this in, the stick or the whole thing in will change what style of flight you're gonna have, okay? So we're gonna take off again. Just giving it throttle. I mean, I'm like literally doing nothing but just giving it some throttle. And there it is, okay, so it's flying. Now, I wanna to talk to you about the modes. So when I press that button, look what happens. Now we can do all the crazy stuff you wanna do and you can fly it as though you were in some sort of an advanced mode, okay? And what that's gonna do is it's gonna give you the benefit of stabilization from AS3X, artificial three axis stabilization, but you're gonna have the advantage of super low weight and super easy to fly still, even with AS3X. It mostly flies itself because of the dihedral on the wing or the proposed dihedral because of those swoops on the side. So if you're looking for a cool, fun gift for Christmas, this would be a great idea it's fun for the RC enthusiast, and it's also fun for, let's go over by the bull here a little bit. It's also fun for the brand new hobbyist that's looking for something to get started with. Now, that being said, you know on Brian Phillips RC, what we do here is we unbox, build, radio set up these planes. We'll have a short clip that shows that entire process from start to finish. It takes about five minutes for you in about three hours for me, just kidding guys. But truth is, we do longer videos. Now I'm gonna click again. Now I'm back in auto leveling. I do enjoy flying this plane in auto leveling with the beautiful fall leaves in the backdrop. What a gorgeous creation. And by the way, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but we're basically in a normal city lot here where we're flying. Oh wait, I'm sorry. What I meant to say was we are flying in an area of our large property that is like a city lot. Because this is sub 250, there is no reason you can't go out front and fly this, unless of course you're right next to an airport and then you might want to avoid that. Now also, the other thing too is guys, being that this is so light and so docile, you need to be a little bit careful about flying in wind. So you see this gigantic thing hanging down? It's not just because it's beautiful. That's our wind sock, okay? Now that's actually not a wind sock, it's called a kite tail, mm -hmm. but you may also notice a bunch of stakes out here. <laughs> These stakes are to indicate where we're gonna put our pond, which is about to get dug, so let's walk a few more steps over. And the pond is going to be over here where the sun is blazing holes into my skull. 
So I would be flying toward it now and it would be in the backdrop. I'd be flying basically over the dam. I'll just tell you when on my mark, there's the dam and it would continue to the other side of that ditch there. And we're gonna be losing some trees. So you may see all these stakes are marked so that we can help our tree mover know where it's safe to dig and where it's gonna be maybe dangerous. And by the way, you see how slow it is? I'm at like 30 to 40% throttle and we still have this nice light to help us understand how much battery we have left inside our little 1S battery. 1S meaning one cell in series. Camera crew back to the middle if you don't mind. So basically what we have here is one of the most little fun creations that you can get. And because it's so light, it will tolerate a little bit of rough housing, like a missed landing, or maybe bumping into the wall of a house, provided you don't break the motors. So I gotta say, what a fun little duet. Hobby Zone, you've done a good job with this one. Okay, gonna go back up. And as you can see, you can just do all sorts of fun stuff. Now, because this is only a three channel, you would say, how do you roll it over like that? Well, if you get it in the right condition with the right amount of speed, you can trick it into doing a barrel roll, sort of. <laughs> oh, the rooster's still crowing. Did you hear that, camera crew? Mm -hmm. it's, it's got its timing back in order. Okay, so now back into the auto leveling. And I gotta say, one of the camera crew's favorite, most favorite times is when I fly in circles directly around her. Mm -hmm. But it's exemplified by when I do it after she just got up. Makes her smile inside and out. <laughs> so for those of you watching this and it's like December 15th and you're thinking, oh boy, I don't know if I can get it. That is a good, that is a good thought. Generally, that would be kind of a little bit late. But the thing is, I'm gonna tell you this. You can buy these from the link in the video description below well before that, and then you'll have no problems getting one. So what I would suggest you do is go ahead and pre-order one or two. That way, when you accidentally take your kids and you crash it into a chimney and destroy it, then you'll be able to open up the box and say, look how good I am at repairing things, kids. But truth is, this thing is such a slow flying plane that it will really honestly help with the problems that you might experience from bad landings. So what I'll do is I'll do a bad landing now. I'm gonna also show you some grass ops real quick. Grass ops meaning landing in grass. If you guys are new to the hobby, we're Brian Phillips RC. Megan, my wife, is my camera crew, and we've been doing this for like nine years, hundreds or maybe a thousand roughly planes, helicopters, quads, VTOLs, all the stuff that you think you want plus weed whackers and e-bikes. Mm -hmm. So if you're not new to the channel, then you know we do e-bikes too. But that being said, we do love reviewing these little airplanes and we love bringing you the best in the hobby and also helping you to figure out how to get back into the hobby. If you're just sitting at home and you're thinking, you know, the kids have moved on, they don't love me anymore, I need something to do with myself. Or maybe my kids love me and they're just busy, so now I need something to do. Either way, if you wanna fly RC airplanes, it's a great way to do it. And our primary target audience is people that are coming back to the hobby and people, <laughs> Rooster just keeps going off. I hope you guys can hear it. Yeah. Cause he's just going crazy and he was going crazy in the last, last video. Night. And that was last night. So this is why you don't get roosters <laughs> in case you're wondering, you get chickens. Yeah. Chickens are the ones that lay eggs. Roosters are the ones that impregnate them. Yeah. So anyway, in case you guys didn't know that, all sorts of lessons on Brian Phillips RC today. The duet from Hobby Zone. This is what we do on Brian Phillips RC. We get these planes, we unbox them, we open them up, we show you how hard it is to set them up, and then we show you if they actually do what they purport to do. As you can see, we've got that nice little light there. Let's keep flying while I blather. If you want to help support Brian Phillips RC in our efforts of teaching about animal reproduction and also about little airplanes that are awesome, then all you have to do is look no further than the video description below where Google will be upset that you've clicked the link and they have lost 13 cents worth of ad revenue. But the truth is you'll make our day because we want you guys to be flying radio controlled airplanes and we want you to be flying them just like I do, which is all the time. Now this one in particular, 
is a great option. It's a great little gift idea and you're gonna have a blast. Let's go ahead and take off the gear real quick just to show people how easy it is. Squeeze, pull, out. Okay, put them in the pocket. This one comes straight out, but I kind of like to leave it because it's a little harder to get out. Plus I think that one comes in the box that way. Mm -hmm. So we'll just fly it without the landing gear. See, look, it's got retracts. It's just a very slow mechanism and it's called your hand. <laughs> but truth is, it doesn't have retracts. It just has removable landing gear. And that's one of the things we like to do on this channel is we like to show you the positives and the negatives of each and every aircraft that we fly. Not every aircraft is the fastest, bestest, cheapest, most winsome, foamiest. That's not what we do. There's others that do that. You've got plenty of choices. Let's go a little closer to the plane there. This thing's dinky. Right there, there you go. And what would you say? This is like 550 millimeters or 450 millimeters, something like that? Yeah, somewhere right around in there. It's very small. And that's why I like small planes are super fun. And you guys are gonna find that when you get ready to start running out of power, you're not gonna hear it in the video, but we'll hear it. It's gonna go like So I'll try to demonstrate that shortly. I'm kind of curious if I can catch it. Do you think I can catch it? I don't think we should encourage that. You don't wanna encourage people to catch these. Okay, don't catch your plane, guys. Just land it. That's the safe way to do it. The, see, this is why we have a camera crew. It's not to hold the camera. It's to help give good advice. Someone needs them to be the mom. About, yes, exactly. Oh, oh. We, we beeped. I don't know what, the, yeah. Your light didn't change though. Not yet, but it's getting ready to, I bet. Okay. Okay, so let's just keep flying. We're gonna go into crazy mode. Okay, now we're in AS3X only. Oh yeah, we can still do loops. Oh, there it's beeped go. again, now it's a red light, oh no. So that means land now, land now, land ho. Okay, so out of the throttle. Don't do that, it's dangerous, guys. Seriously, the camera crew said don't do it, and I did it anyway. Do you wanna see why? Do you see that? Are right there. Because it has differential thrust. But I just wanted to show you that your hand will probably survive, as you can see. This is one of the biggest safety features that the camera crew evidently had forgotten. And that is that these things just don't carry that much thrust. But it's not a good habit for a kid to get it's into. It's not a good habit for kids to get into. So if you're not a kid, you should be fine. But if you are a kid, don't do that. It's a bad idea. Now, that being said, you see how it keeps doing this? That's because I keep yawing the plane. And so what I'm going to do, <laughs> we have seeds on the nose too. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just give it full throttle and I wanna teach you what it sounds like when it's running out, okay? Come on, you can do it. So it's evidently regained some of its thrust. Yeah. Oh, there it goes. Do you see how it went to red? So what happens is with lithium polymer batteries, that's what this is, there is such a thing as sag, okay? So camera crew, would you like to tell people about that? <laughs> sag is where your, your basic, now this plane is trying to auto level itself. So I'm gonna click the stick and see it stops. The reason it keeps doing that is because it's trying to find the quickest route to level, okay? So if you have to click that stick, then it's going to go ahead and stop trying to write itself. And the way it writes itself is it gives one or the other, depending on which side you're at, okay? Or depending on which way you're tipping. So sag is where your battery will drop down for a moment and then it's going to recover. This is what one of the many beauties, one of the beautiful characteristics of lithium polymer packs, okay? So as you can see, this one has a 1S 150 milliamp, 25C pack, and they did provide some hook and loop. Yeah, that's right, that's not Velcro, it's hook and loop. So if you guys want one of these for your very own, all you have to do is look in the video description, you can see a link, and when you buy from that link, you'll help support Brian Phillips RC with small financial contributions from the companies that make these airplanes. So if you like this one, or if you think your grandkids will like it, or if you like it, and you're gonna get two and just say they accidentally shipped you two instead of one, that's a great idea, and I won't tell if you won't tell. Or if you're a mom and you're buying one for your kid, just buy one for your husband too before that's he right. takes your kids. 
because that's what's going to happen and yes. you know it. <laughs> that being said, as you can see, it's not like the most, it's, it, this is still EPS, okay? So it's, it's like what we've seen in the past for ultra micro extreme planes, UMX planes. So it is definitely going to have its delicate parts, but because it flies at like the speed of anti-light, it's very slow, which is exactly what you want as a beginner. Believe me, as soon as you get this thing in the air, you're still going to be nervous and you're going to be like, what do I do now? Well, the, the good news is when you have a plane with auto leveling, then all you have to do is basically press the throttle stick up and it'll glide up into the air. And then you're like, oh crap, what do I do now? Well, don't use this stick because it doesn't do anything like you would expect a rudder to do on a mode two transmitter. It's actually over here because this is the three channel. So then it acts like an aileron, okay? So you can treat this like a bank and yank and then this acts like the elevator, okay? So imagine you were sitting in the cockpit and you were grabbing the stick in the middle and this would be the exact same thing you'd be grabbing. So pull up, it goes up, push down, it goes down. Roll to the left, it goes to the left. Roll to the right, it goes to the right. And then this stick, you would pretend you're moving it and it would just keep going straight. But if you're used to flying radio controlled aircraft, this would give you your yaw control. But because this is a three channel with differential thrust, this is gonna give you your yaw control, okay? So lots to learn. And that's why we love doing this stuff on Brian Phillips RC. We're gonna mix in some fun and zany remarks about roosters, obviously. But the truth is we really do love this stuff. And seeing these little entry level options for Christmas 2023 and years past because this has been a popular plane for many years but then it went off the market for a little bit because the supply chain changes one of the big changes was they could no longer get the flight controller which to me was a good thing because this thing is locked in compared to what it used to be because it's locked in you're going to have a better flight experience however I did notice one trick this does that the old one didn't and that is when you land and you go to take the battery out, it's gonna to try to fight you and it's gonna run one of the props. So that's part of the reason why I reluctantly broke the camera crew's rules and caught the plane. Don't do that. This prop is spinning with so little energy that you should be safe to catch it if you want. Just be careful with your face and if you've got little kids, little kids' cans, it's gonna scare them more than it's gonna hurt them. Because as you can see, calloused adult hands are probably a little bit different than seven-year-olds or 10-year-olds or whatever. So, beautiful plane, good job Hobby Zone, which is a Horizon Hobby company. And we think you guys are gonna really enjoy this. Very basic electronics-wise, as far as you can tell, but it's doing a lot of complex measurements and execution of commands from the receiver multi-purpose brick. So really cool, really fun. And if you ever do need to work on this plane, there's a way you can do it. And that is to use an X-Acto knife to cut along this seam where the tape is, and then along this seam where the tape is until you get to about here, and then it will hinge open. And you can get in there and you can simply replace motors and do all that good stuff because these brushed motors, they do eventually wear out. And if you like to learn how to work on these radio controlled airplanes, this is a good place to start. Just keep in mind, because this uses EPS instead of EPO, you will have to use a very foam safe glue and resist using kicker if you're used to using kicker because kicker speeds up the transaction, the chemical reaction, and sometimes that'll melt foam. So China glue is a good option for this, which is called foam to foam. If you're buying from Horizon Hobby, and then there's a couple other manufacturers that make it, but generally it comes in white unmarked bottles because it's mystery glue. That's why we call it China glue because they use it in China to assemble stuff, but it works really good. It's like a rubber cement contact cement. So hopefully you've learned something in this video and you enjoyed the content and we hope we'll have you back here on Brian Phillips RC. We love doing this stuff and we know you will too. So check out the links. That's the best way to support us. If you don't wanna support us that way, but you'd like to give us an attaboy, we have PayPal. Remember, we're friends and family. If you do that, we have Patreon for monthly support, YouTube members for monthly support, and YouTube super thanks. Any of those would be much appreciated, but really we think the best way to support us is to just buy these amazing planes when you see one that strikes a chord with you. And yes, that means that many of you are gonna be beyond this on Brian Phillips RC because we review advanced airplanes as well. And when I say advanced, that's within the spectrum of my skill set. But everybody starts somewhere. And I started with a duet also. This was not my first plane, but my son had one. And we fought 
and flew and fought and fixed and flew and fixed and then fought and fixed. Mm -hmm. We still have it. <clears throat> yeah, we do. In fact, I think we did a video where we flew it inside and we had like a bunch of like sticky notes on here Probably. to help make flaps. It was ridiculous. <clears throat> but what I can tell you is when you get ready to buy something and if you want a low investment, but still high fun, this would be a good one to go with. Now, there's obviously other choices if you're a beginner. And my suggestion is that if you have the money, this is a great, fun gift idea, toy idea. But if you wanna get into the more hobby grade, we've got those too. And we should have released them recently. So all you have to do is look on our Brian Phillips page. You just click on my face. Looks like a baby face somewhere. Click on that, it's gonna take you to our YouTube channel, and then you can see just a few back, we would have reviewed another one called The Apprentice Stole, okay? I know I can say that because this is releasing after. And The Apprentice Stole is another great option. And by the way, we go into all the details on that. But if you're just looking for a couple of planes that are gonna get you in the air and help build your confidence, because most people, they just need a little nudge to get in the air. Just like that. Mm -hmm. It's just all you need. And once you're in the air, <clears throat> Once you're in the air, you're going to be hooked and it's going to be a lifelong skill. Even if you might take a hiatus when you're really busy at work or you might have a hiatus when you've got young babies at home and things like this. This is just part of life. But we want you back in the hobby because it's an amazing hobby to be in. So hopefully we've answered your questions, guys. Thanks so much for watching. We hope we'll have you back because there's so much more footage coming from Brian Phillips RC. Thanks for watching. YouTube, it's Brian Phillips, and it's been so long. <laughs> We're gonna open this box. They don't I feel know. like we just made it through a desert, and now it's like a smorgasbord. And we hope that you guys enjoy all this new content because we would have kind of liked to have it for the last three months. Oh yeah, it's the duet, it's amazing. New and improved duet, making sure there's nothing else in here. There isn't. There's not. Okay guys, this is the duet ready to fly. It is an RC control ready to fly. Oh, I was looking at the wrong side, sorry. Ready to fly, everything you need in one box. Rechargeable batteries, okay. Cool. Let's see if that's true. Ooh, look at this fancy dance. We have some 1S pack. Amazing. 1S comes with a little piece of Velcro. There's a little protector on the connector. Then there should be a charger here. This is an unbox on Brian Phillips RC. If you haven't seen us before, if this is the first time you've come to the channel, don't worry, there's only like 2,000 more videos for you to watch. Yeah. And they're not short. We'll keep you busy. Yeah, for like 15 years. Yeah. So check this out, guys. We're gonna charge the battery because that's where everybody starts a video. The reason we like to charge a battery is because everybody that starts this video is gonna wanna charge their battery first because you're gonna get excited. This did not come in the box. So I'm not sure everything you need, right? So we're gonna just do that. And then we're gonna take this thing. I'm not putting the Velcro on yet. And then this uh, little protective thing can lay here. Then this slides in and boy, there's a light on there. Yep. Pretty sweet. Oh, by the way, if you're curious what that says, it says, Red light, charging, LED off, charge complete, okay? So it talks about the milliamp hours of current that that generates. I'm just gonna lay that Velcro on top of the bag. Camera crew and I are gonna come back over here. Camera crew is my wife of many years. Her name is Megan, she has a name, mm -hmm. okay? If you heard snide remarks, it is definitely my wife talking about something I said that was probably stupid. <laughs> Welcome to the club, it's Brian Phillips RC, all right. So we have some Fuji batteries. Now these batteries are about three times as nice as the batteries I would purchase mm -hmm. to put inside of the transmitter because ours would come for Harbor Freight. They would be pre-damaged and very, very light. They pay us to take those batteries. Yes, they actually, yes. Yeah. We get stipends from them. They're like, get them out of the Please stores. Safety. It's a safety issue. <laughs> so we're like, put it in our transmitter. But all joking aside, guys, it is nice to see a plane. Oh yeah that comes out of the box, ready to fly. So beautiful. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, but we've had the Duet forever. Now, the truth is, 
It's not been around forever, but it has, it has been around for a long time. In fact, the Duet was one of the first planes that I had, okay? This one has a new flight controller in it. So we're gonna see how much better it really is. What's this here? I see, like whoa, battery. there's another battery in here. It's a big battery. I wonder if this one, this probably came from the factory guys, so I don't know that that's gonna come in your package, but this is a 210 milliamp hour. Wow. Yeah, 210 milliamp hour. And this one here is a 50 C battery as opposed to a 30 C. That just means that it's gonna charge and discharge a little bit quicker. And this one here is 150 milliamp hour and that's a 25 C, okay? So just to give you an idea, there's a couple of different ratings on these batteries that we get on these airplanes. Uh, there is a milliamp hour, which speaks to the amount of capacity. How long is it gonna run for? Then there's an S rating, or it's not really a rating, but if it's S as in series. So how many cells in series do you expect? One in this case, one S. <clears throat> And then there's the C rating, which speaks to the amount of amplitude of power that can go out to the device or can be forced in from the charger without causing some sort of a safety issue or excessive heat. Okay, so this is a 2.4 gigahertz hobby zone transmitter for the Duet, it's branded here. So there's a mode two and mode one, I'm not really sure uh, what that does, but then there's a power switch, throttle, there is a movement here, but since there's no rudder, you're probably like, how is this going to, you know, yaw? Well, this has differential thrust. One motor will spin faster than the other to yaw the aircraft. And then there's an elevator to control the pitch. Of course, that's right here, okay? And then there's no ailerons on this plane. But sometimes on three channel planes, you will move this to move the rudder and sometimes it's over here like it would be on a four channel plane. Throttle is here, rudder, aileron or rudder, and then elevator, okay? Now, the other thing is there's this scoop shape to the wing, which is a simulated dihedral, okay? Dihedral is like this. And what happens is you have a big heavy dude and you have wings, and so the big heavy dude sort of balances the plane down in an upright configuration. This plane takes it one step further with a protocol that's run inside of the receiver, which you can't even see in here, but if you look really close, there's one of the little servos in there. See that? Mm -hmm. And there is a multi-purpose brick or receiver that is also going to act as a dual, there's two ESCs for the two brushed motors, not brushless, unfortunately. And what that does is it's going to act as a stabilizer to resist the wind and resist the wind and resist the wind in all the axis of control that it has authority over. Keeping in mind, this is a three channel plane, which means you have pitch, yaw, but no roll because roll is assumed through pitch or through yaw control, okay? So on the bottom of your box, there will be a non-folded manual. Thank you, Horizon, for doing that. And by the way, if you guys are new to the channel, one of my biggest pet peeves is manuals that are folded. I hate folded manuals. Okay, so that comes ready to go. And all you have to do is just know how to read English or German or whatever other languages there are. I put this in in the wrong angle too. Did you see that? Camera crew would normally check on oh, that, but she- It's got a slot for the handles. Me. Yeah. Now, one of the other things too about this plane that's really nice is this. Look, you have a carrying case right here. Mm -hmm. And yes, I know you're probably thinking to yourself, but my living room is not gonna look like this, Brian. You don't need to worry about that with me. Just remember, those are the exact words I told my wife. <laughs> and you haven't seen my basement. There's probably another 400 planes down there. Maybe more like 800. I don't even know. Not, it's not 800, but no, it might be 400. We shouldn't count. Yeah, we, we don't count. No, It might cause marital stopped. problems. Yes. Okay, so if you choose to buy this battery, we'll go ahead and show you. Um, we'll have links in the video description below. We do work with these partner companies. 
And yes, those planes are all from competitive brands. They're not just from this brand. And so what we do is we review all sorts of different planes. And we also do helicopters, quads, VTOLs. I mean, there's some helicopters over here. Mm -hmm. And we do all that stuff here on Brian Phillips RC. So if you're brand new to the hobby or if you're just returning to the hobby, we love to help people get started. And so if you're brand new to the hobby, you're in the perfect place. Or if you're returning to the hobby and you're like, well, Brian, I've got my Futaba four channel with crystals, 72 megahertz. Then I'd be like, okay, keep that on the shelf as a beautiful representation of history because you can't really probably even use that legally anymore. Not that I would care if it's legal or not. Okay, so as you can see, a little battery here, beautiful. Okay, so it's got a little, keep that intact so you can unplug them easily. Now that's called a micro pH connector. If you want, and you know, you got kids or a husband or a wife or whatever that's going to be flying with you and uh, you want to buy one of these chargers, that's really the way to rock and roll right there because yep. then you can stick this thing in here and I'm giving you the 100% guarantee when you get your kids flying, you're going to basically be fighting over batteries, okay? So now I can scroll this into 210 or 0.21, press and hold. It's gonna start charging and also display the voltage. 4.2 is our target, 3.8 is a storage level charge. So. And this charger is simple enough that kids can use it once they figure out the process. And can be respecting the pins because yes. those pins are small yeah. on those micro pH connectors. Now we've talked a lot about chargers because chargers are important. If you've ever gotten a non-hobby grade device, like at Walmart, or Target or whatever, and it says it's gonna fly, and you're like, I had a terrible experience. Just remember, this is probably the median point between a, a high quality toy grade plane and a hobby grade entry level. This, let me give you one example. This is a hobby grade plane, okay? <laughs> so it's much more detailed, it's considerably more expensive. Another great example would be right here, this yellow one here. Mm -hmm. That's hobby grade. This is hobby grade. This plane will go 120 miles an hour and it's controllable and beautiful. This plane will not go 120 miles an hour, strangely enough. <laughs> so I just want you to understand that as you engage in gateway drugs like this, you will find that they are so satisfying that you may need an SR-71 to sit on your table and make you excited about the prospect of flying it next, okay? So these, these are the real deal models that you can get. And if you haven't been in the hobby for like the last, let's call it 15 years, then you probably didn't even know that thing's made of foam, but it looks like a plastic model and it flies. It's got two little electric ducted fans. They look like jets. This thing has two props and it's gonna be just as fun because I'm gonna tell you this, if you've never piloted an RC plane, you need to do it yesterday, okay? Let's stick the batteries in. If you're not sure how to do these steps and you're like, thank God, Brian, you exist because I go and talk to the hobby shop and they just don't have any advice for me beyond buy the more expensive thing because we wanna make some money on you. Here at Brian Phillips RC, we do make some money on sales, but at the end of the day, we don't care what you get. We don't care how expensive or how cheap it is. We just want you to become another fellow RC addict. We want you to get the right plane at the right time. For the right reasons. Right. Because, because if you don't get the right plane for the right reasons, guess what? You are going to be done. Yeah. A one and done, in fact, is what you'll be. Okay. And your wife will not be happy with it. So there's different colors. Fancy. By the way, it's got some weight to it. These controllers, we call this a Batman controller because it looks like Batman. That is not branded, so it's not technically called a Batman controller. But you'll notice it's got that big bump out. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so then when you're ready to fly this, you have to, of course, put a battery into the plane, keeping in mind that safety comes first. So when you have your transmitter turned on, then you can go ahead and power up your plane. There are few exceptions to that rule where this will be powered first before the transmitter comes on, because here's the thing. Once you start flying, it's all on your shoulders. Okay. And that's part of the excitement and scary and rewarding and frustrating and difficult parts of flying radio controlled airplanes. 
This thing is made of a foam that will allow this to break if you crash it just right, but it's light enough that it doesn't carry that much inertia to when you do crash into the grass or a tree or a limb or something like that. But just remember, you are responsible for the safety of the people around you. Be careful, this is light enough that it requires no drone registry. And let's go ahead and weigh it just to show you that and prove it to you. You can just stay right there, camera crew. Okay. We'll grab our good kitchen scale. If you guys are brand new to the channel, I work on industrial scales for a living. That's my day gig. And I've been doing that for almost 18 years now. And so I do it a lot. I'm gonna actually hang this over the okay. edge. And I wanna see if I can get, this is a, kind of a weird shape. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hang it over the edge so I can put the wheels down. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty dang yeah, light. I think 30, you're... 39 grams? That's nuts. Are you kidding me? Okay, so I know I'm on charging, I'm unplugging you. So that all up weight is gonna be 44, 44 grams. That is crazy. Okay, just to give you an idea, just to give you an idea, I'm trying to think of something I could show that would be of considerable weight, just as a comparison. Well, something that most people would have an idea of how much it weighs. Like a pair of scissors, or I don't know, something. I'm starting to think what How about a salt kitchen. shaker? Okay. Salt shaker. This is our actual kitchen. This is a real salt shaker. Watch this. Well, what if it's not full? It There's salt. Okay, ready? Let's see how much the salt shaker weighs. This is six grams, guys. That's crazy. That is crazy. So there you go, 163 grams. So this thing weighs like three times as much. So for those of you that are worried about the safety factor, just maybe don't, okay? When you're flying this blue one, then you can start worrying about the safety factor. Yeah. Because that's one of the reasons why they call this a trainer is because it is light, it's very easy to fly. And so for that reason, it's a perfect choice for you if you're brand new to the hobby. Now, here's a trick. If you pick this up, you can actually slide that in a little easier, okay? And then and I'm gonna plug, plug it the into the outlet. In. Yep, that's what I like to do. Now, the other thing that's very nice about this charger, and we'll link to this, it's not included with the package. In fact, this is gonna cost a considerable amount compared to the plane. But that's one of the things you get here on Brian Phillips RC, is we're gonna do this unbox, build, and radio setup. Now, there's no radio setup because you literally turn the radio on and there's no build and it's going to work <laughs> and there's no build so you're probably like what the heck do you mean by unbox build radio setup well what i mean is like this this plane here mm -hmm. we had to put this together there's a number of parts it wasn't a hard build but this one's another offering and it's very cool but the thing is this sea wind took us you know a couple hours to put the plane together put the receiver in and then set up our programmable transmitter we are going to teach you exactly how to do those things with planes, but when they're easy like this with a ready to fly configuration, you usually kind of get a tidbit at the end of the video after you've seen us flying it and just proving it's worth. Now, obviously it's dark, so we're not gonna be flying in the dark, but we'll have this thing ready to go the next time we have a nice calm day. Keeping in mind this thing is not a very fast plane, and so because of that, you need to fly during calm, okay? Now also, I would highly recommend keeping the landing gear on because it helps to keep the center of gravity where it needs to be. The center of gravity, of course, is how this balances. Now, it's balancing, like it's falling backward. That's called tail heavy. And once you get this balanced, it's going to go forward like that, or level, and that's called nose heavy or tail heavy. You want the center of gravity to be right on. That's gonna be outlined in this manual, okay? So there's very little that you actually have to do to, act, to get this thing in the air. And the biggest part is, of course, buy it from the links in the video description below. They're talking about the weight here. Okay. Okay. All right, so that's pretty simple stuff. Everything looks, obviously you need to be careful to keep your throttle stick down when you're getting ready to start so it doesn't start with the throttle going. Okay, now toggle between AS3X and safe. Okay, that's a pressy in thing. See that? That's another thing. I don't know what that does. Must be high rates, low rates probably. And you'll see they want you to launch it into the wind, which is true for all these things, okay? Now that being said, 
when you see this oscillation in power, it's going to go flying along. That means it's low on battery, so it's going to stop. So what you haven't seen yet. Hold on, since you are just talking about battery. Yeah. Flashing light. So is that going to flash? Oh, cool. Yes, so that's going to change color. When it's red, you should land immediately. Yes. That is so cool. So really we're going nice. to have battery feedback. Yeah. So that means that when your battery is low, you can just see this here. And mm -hmm. there may be even some audible beeps and things like that. But that's one of the things that you may not know about all these electric planes. Because if you're still of the mindset that everything is a nitro plane or a gas plane from yesteryear, there's still obviously those things exist. But most planes right now are electric especially for beginners, because it's just so much easier to get up in the air. Mm -hmm. And that's not to take anything away from the concept of having a gas plane. And uh, we'll probably eventually get into those here, but our property is such that we have room for these things, okay? So we hope that we've answered all your questions. We're gonna go ahead and grab one of these batteries just to show you how quick it is to get the thing flying. And I don't know if we can fly it inside because it's probably still a little bit too I'm just gonna pull this out prematurely. Now, one other tip, when you get one of these battery chargers, it's really nice because I can actually carefully plug this in on the UM plug. I don't even care how fast, I'll just press and start this. Yeah, see it says it's full. So it must've got us really close to full because it hadn't quite yet turned off, okay? So let's go ahead and see how this initiates and if there's anything weird about it. Oh, and by the way, if you don't put Velcro on here, it's really hard to put these batteries in because it's got an open bay. But I'm gonna tell you a trick. If you decide you'd like to just use batteries without Velcro, because I'm not a big proponent of Velcro, you can make a loop that will hold your battery and then you can stick it on there and it'll hold. Or you can take some clear tape and go across here and then make a small pocket to actually hold your battery. I've preferred that method over Velcro for years, but on these very small batteries, it is kind of nice to just use the provided Velcro or hook and loop. Now, you need to be careful. There's two pieces of hook and loop here and you wanna make sure you get the right one, okay? There's the soft side and then the firm side mm -hmm. with the hooks. You don't know what the plane is until you know what the plane is, okay? So if you look right there, it looks like we've already got the soft mounted to the plane and the, the firm hook part is gonna to need to go on the battery, okay? Now that is not always the case. And that's one of the reasons why I'm not a huge fan of using hook and loop. But if you want, you can literally take some clear tape, wrap it around that battery once, backward, and then wrap it around once forward, stick this to that, and you've got a battery set up that can be moved from battery, or from battery to battery, okay? But in this case, just for the sake of saving time. <clears throat> also, that label will be the first thing to rip off as soon as we stop the video. Now, see that tab going underneath? You do want to kind of tuck that if you can. And you see how there's a little bit of room here? You've got movement forward and backward to help make the center of gravity work. Okay, I'm going to just lay this down very carefully. Make sure my throttle cuts down or throttle stick is down. Plug this in. You see it's flashing. Now, I'm going to relatively quickly take this and flip it over onto its feet or landing gear in this case and you notice it went to a green condition from a blue condition that means that it's ready to rock and roll now we can test the surfaces elevator up elevator down oh that's so cool so look roll left roll right which it will also roll and it looks like the yaw is over here okay so because it's three channel now i am actually thinking this may fly in here it's so light oh, you want to try? Um, yeah, I'll go in the entryway. I have no idea if I can fly it in here. It might be, I don't know if we've got enough. Might be too fast. It might be too fast, but I still, I think I'm gonna try it. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll throw it toward this chair just in case we don't have enough room, okay? Okay. So, because of that. <sighs> oh yeah, it, it's gonna carry a little bit of speed and so I, I don't think I have enough room to maneuver in here. Okay. We have flown planes in here before. Um, but as you can see, there's kind of a glowing light inside of there. It's blue. Watch this. When I click this button, 
It changes to a red, but it's a little oh. bit hard to see. In mm -hmm. fact, let's go in the hallway where the light is dim. Okay. So you see how it's glowing red? Oh, yes. Now it's glowing blue. Yep. Now, the difference between that as we go back into the light is if you look at the elevator, the elevator is going to point up, trying to level the plane, and it's gonna point down, trying to level the plane. That's when it's blue, that's got safe on, so it's called sensor assisted flight envelope, and that's gonna help keep your plane level when you let go of the sticks. Now, if I turn that off, it goes to AS3X, artificial three axis stabilization, which is what that stands for, and what that does is, it's no longer gonna try to level the plane, but it's going to respond to environmental impact to try to make it easier to fly. So if you're not telling it to roll left or to yaw left, then that'd be left, <laughs> then it's going to resist the temptation to move in the wind. That being said, again, this plane is not overly robust for speed. And so you're gonna have some limitations. You don't wanna take this out and try to fly it in super high wind. In fact, you don't wanna fly it in anything over pretty much five miles per hour is what they suggest in the manual. That being said, let's see how this thing balances. Now, wherever it balances, that's where the center of gravity is. So you can see how my middle fingers are reached out and it's balanced right along that wire, okay? Now, is that correct? Did they mention this? I don't know if we've gotten to it yet. Or yeah. Or if it says. I don't know if it says in this because it's such a beginner Usually, plane, they might not even yeah, mention it. doesn't it. always matter. See, they even show you how to do binding. So if you guys are looking how to bind and you want to download the manual right here, it's going to pull this open a little bit more. The, the binding on the binding of the book is a little bit tight to be read, so we'll just do that. There you go. See, now, if you want to bind it, you can. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we've answered your basic questions. You've already seen it fly. You know it's going to be a fun one for a beginner in your life, whether that's a kid of somebody that flies planes like this, or it's for you because you want to fly planes like this eventually. But the truth is, remember, you have to start somewhere. You're not going to start there because you will end there. I promise you, if you get the wrong plane, the first plane, you will end your hobby before it ever begins. And that is why we push so hard to get you to buy the right things at the right time for the right reasons as a beginner pilot. Now that does seem a little bit counterintuitive if we're trying to make small commissions from these manufacturers because you would think we'd want you to buy the most expensive plane you can afford. It's just, we want you to be in the air with us because it's such a cool experience. Now, that being said, this duet is one of several different beginner planes that we recommend. So if you have questions about other beginner planes that we recommend, which would probably be along the lines of an Aero Scout 1.1 meter, that one does require drone registry, or if you were to go to some other options, can we talk about the other one right now? Mm -hmm. Should be released. So the Apprentice Stole is another great option. Okay, it's gonna give you different features, but it's also gonna cost a little bit more money, but it might meet your needs better. Or even going up to a Habu, which is an EDF jet, so you could actually be flying that maybe for your first plane, and probably better as a second or third plane in my opinion, but it is actually doable. And just depending on how much room you have. So this thing will fly in a backyard, it's gonna be fully legal for you, provided you're flying as a recreational pilot. I don't know what you're gonna do commercially with this, <laughs> but the truth is this is just a really fun plane. And so if you're looking for a great gift idea for people for Christmas in 2023 or even beyond, this would be a great option for them. And it's not gonna break the bank. So yeah. that being said, we hope we've answered all your questions and hopefully we've turned you onto our channel for Brian Phillips RC. This is what we do. We have been doing it for almost a decade now. I think we're nine years deep almost or so. Almost nine years, yeah probably about 18 to 1900 videos deep. Mm -hmm. Google stopped telling us how many. They They're forgot. like, whatever, they it's a lot. Yeah. And so if you wanna see a particular plane, we also have a website called Brian Phillips RC and you can go to Brian Phillips RC and you can sort by distributor, manufacturer, hobby shop, whoever we happen to work with, or you can sort by the type. So this would be in like the beginner planes or sport planes. You know, whereas this jet here that we talked about in the front that's got the orange stripes that says 07 on it, that would be like an EDF jet. Mm -hmm. And then we have like fighter jets 
And then we have like World War II warbirds. We have helicopters, all sorts of different things. Now, these are just the ones that are up here. I'm saying this not facetiously. There's literally thousands more videos. So if you can't find a plane that you like on our channel, it's because you don't know that it's there. Or, uh, you know, more experience required 3D helicopters <coughs> that fly on 6S batteries that cost more than this plane. We do all that stuff and we do it so that we can help get you guys into the hobby in the most painless method possible that we know how. And that is by getting the right thing at the right time for the right reasons at the beginning of your hobby. Now, if you're more experienced and you're like, hey, Brian, I've been flying for 20 years, but I've been out of it for the last 10 years because we had young children in the home and we had to do soccer practice and all these different things got in the way, but I'm ready to get back into it. Is this the plane for me? That's a great question. It depends on your budget and how big of a flying field you have. If you have room, I would probably talk you into a bigger plane. But the thing is, this might be a fun one to start with and it's very low dollars. So the thing is you can get into this as a ready to fly and you can be out there flying around and just saying, you know what, that wet, wet, that wet my whistle perfectly. I know I'm ready to take the plunge. I don't wanna just do any more beginner planes. I just wanna go straight to the EDF jets because I got what it takes. Then you can get back into your programmable transmitter that costs probably half as much as you spent for your Futaba 4 channel that you got in the basement with your crystal sets. And I have like something like 200 planes in this one, okay? And so that's really nice because then the next thing you know, you come back to the channel and we'll help teach you how to make it fly this one and that one and that one and that one and both helicopters and all the planes because mm -hmm. every single one of these planes with the exception of some small ready to fly planes are gonna be set up in there. So it's really cool. So we'll teach you how to do that from start to finish. And I'm talking about we open the box and when it's done, we're flying it, except we usually kind of fly it at the beginning and then we just go back yeah. and revert back to the full setup. So anyway, hopefully we've answered all your questions and we have wet your whistle to the point where you're ready to take the deep dive into something like this for yourself or for your friend or your wife or your husband or whatever. Well, and that's what I was just going to say. If you're a more experienced pilot and you're like, I don't need a duet, I can fly that with my eyes closed. Yeah. You, that box is so small. You shouldn't you fly that, them with your you eyes closed. You keep it in your truck. You keep crew. it in your car. Don't fly with your eyes closed. You should open your eyes. And it's then a good idea. you can fly You can have somebody else come fly that with you. Yeah. Especially with the Batman controller. It is, yeah. fits a kid's, kids hand better. Kids hands better than the yeah. big programmable transmitters. But you can still use that transmitter and it's fine. That's right. Yeah. And but it's some of the cheaper ready to flies have such small transmitters that it's hard for adult hands to use. Mm -hmm. Okay. And let's make no mistake, guys, this is an adult hobby, meaning that mostly adults do it, yeah. but you got to get the kids into it because this is not a game on your cell phone. It takes a little bit of skill. It takes a little bit of money and it takes a little bit of patience. Three things that kids a don't generally patience. have. Yeah. Okay. So if you want your kid to fly, then you're going to need to enable them to fly. Mm -hmm. They can't go download a free app and learn. They can probably get a couple of free apps as simulators, but they're not the same because you're not moving the sticks the same yep. way. But I guarantee you this, you 50 year old guys, you aren't playing video games like your 18 year old grandkids, okay? They are, well, or kids or whatever it is. Um, they are, and so they're gonna have a big edge on you, okay? Which is frustrating for us that have to work to learn but things. But they still need real stick time. That's right. Real stick time, real pain and suffering when they crash, real glue involved. <laughs> and that's what we do here on Brian yep. Phillips RC. We routinely crash planes and fix them. Mm -hmm. So we're going to help you guys do the same thing, which is hopefully less crashing and less fixing. But at the same time, it is kind of a fact of the reality that you're going to experience on these. So we love bringing it to you here and we do it a lot sometimes up to five videos in a week. Those are really like long weeks, mm -hmm. but usually there's a couple. So with, without further ado, we're gonna close out this video. The Duet from Hobby Zone, really fun product from Horizon Hobby, and you can get it in ready to fly. And if you're not into this, or maybe you're a little bit past it, we have other amazing choices for you. So we hope we'll see you here again. If you wanna subscribe, all you have to do is 
click the bell for notifications and then you'll know when we put out new content. And then also if you wanna support us, but maybe this plane isn't for you or you just wanna give us a high five with a few bucks, we have super thanks down below. We have YouTube members, we have Patreon, which is a monthly support just like YouTube membership, but it does come in a little bit lower fee structure, just so you guys know. And then of course we have PayPal. But at the end of the day, we still think the number one best way that you can support Brian Phillips RC and the efforts that we have to help grow this hobby, prevent one and dones and get people back into the hobby is to just buy these planes. It helps us to reinforce relationships that we have with these different RC product companies and RC product distributors, as well as RC hobby shops. Okay. And we close the ecosystem when you guys buy stuff through our links, because then they know that you're watching our video footage. So anyway, that's how you can really support us. If you want to support us in our efforts, we don't think they're vain because we have seen lots of lives changed with this, which is crazy, but yet still it is one of the most immersive, amazing, difficult, challenging, frustrating, amazing, wonderful, perfect hobbies that you can ever have. And that's flying radio controlled airplanes, fixed wing, is probably my favorite, but flying helicopters is really fun too. Flying quads is really fun. Flying VTOLs is really fun. And then flying the big jets and stuff like this, really fun. They're all amazing in their own right, at their own time for the right reasons. In everybody's life, is everybody's at different stages. So we're held to help you find the right fit for you right now. So anyway, the duet might be yours. And we hope you'll get one from the link in the video description below. Thanks guys. Come back for more.